So let's talk about how to know if you're getting in your own way. How to know if you're getting in your own way. So a lot of these things are coming from DBT, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, um, which is primarily used to treat borderline personality disorder. But it's also coming from years of experience and things I've seen with clients. And it's coming from NARM, Neuroaffective Relational Model, which is treatment for early developmental trauma. And often that looks like borderline features and narcissistic personality disorder features. So it's coming from a lot of places. Um, DBT calls these therapy interfering behaviors. So again, how do you know you're getting in your own way in your life? How do you know you're actually gonna make progress in something? And I'm gonna give you a clear solution at the end, so be sure to watch to the end because I am gonna give you a solution um, that <laughs> is, might be challenging, but it's the point, that's the point, right? So there's no shame in any of this too. I wanna just preface that. There's no shame in any of this. There's no judgment. It's just, it just is. We've seen this, therapists see this all the time. Um, I have these things in myself. We all do these things. And the, the problem is not that they're there. The problem's not actually that the fact that you're getting in your own way, it's the fact that you're not looking at, at the fact that you're getting in your own way, right? So um, even people, I will see this often, people with severe trauma like PTSD will be ready. If they don't have some of these, some, some of these things happening, people with severe trauma can come into therapy and blow it out of the water. They do so well, right? They're so ready to change. Um, but I hear everybody wants to change. People call me and they say, I really want to change. <laughs> I really don't want to suffer anymore. I really, um, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I'm at my wit's end. You can say that, but that doesn't mean you're actually going to do anything about it. It doesn't actually mean that it's going to change. And I'm going to give you a list of reasons why and specific behaviors that you might be doing that are keeping you stuck okay and this is also a good litmus test to tell like are you ready to look at these things are you ready to approach these things in yourself or do you want to just keep saying you want to do something different but you continue to do the same thing and then you don't talk about it in therapy so also this is I'm taking all the context out of it so if you hear symptoms that I'm saying that resonate for you or that you're doing or you have done, um, know, and you feel like you feel attacked by, by this message, know that, again, we're taking context out of it. Sometimes these things happen. And again, the solution I'm gonna give you at the end is gonna help you a lot. Um, start to tackle some of these pieces if you really wanna change. And this also lets you know, like, are you ready to work with me? People who are not ready to approach these um, ways in which they're getting in their own way are not ready to work with me. You actually need to spend time in talk therapy probably for a while, and I would highly recommend somebody that, that um, is trained in NARM. I'm trained in NARM, but the groups that I, the groups and the work that I do are for people who are really ready to change, and they're really ready and willing to implement the solution I'm gonna give you, okay? So it doesn't mean that if you're, if you're doing these things that you can't work with me, it's that it's the willingness to work with these patterns, okay? So things that, things, signs that you're getting in your own way, signs that you're, um, that you're sabotaging, signs that you're not actually ready, uh, are, th are things like committing to something and then backing out. You sign up for stuff and then you don't even start it or you don't finish it. Feeling like you're getting closer to what you want. Usually this is subconscious. This is not a conscious thing typically, but you're, you start to get closer to the life you want. And then you start backing away from that in some way. You start not engaging as much. You start making excuses about, oh, I don't, you know, I can't pay for it or I can't, um, I don't have time anymore or this thing's getting in the way or you start scheduling things over the work right um, saying you're at your wits end and how hard your life is and then not following through when it comes time to start the work you can say you want you're at your wits end and you can't keep suffering this way but that requires work to get out of that 
it requires showing up. It, can, it requires consistency uh, to do something different with that. And so you can say that you're in pain to the ends of the earth, and that doesn't really matter if you're not willing to show up. Frequently being late or canceling sessions, this is a big one. It happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. There's a subconscious avoidance in that, um, typically if it's a consistent pattern. Okay, so again, these are things that are patterns. If it's a one-time thing, that's different, right? This is a different situation, but consistent patterns in all of these symptoms and all of these behaviors are therapy interfering behaviors. Um, staying in constant crisis or even predicting that there's going to be a crisis and, and doing the same thing to not try to do something different. So like knowing that a certain behavior that you're going to engage in is going to activate the same crisis or the same stressful situation and you don't try to slow down and do something different to take ownership for your part of it. Okay, um, blaming external factors for your problems. Again, within reason, life happens, shit happens, it happens, right? It's, it's not that, again, if this is a one time, a few times here and there, and when you're traumatized, you tend to, trauma begets more trauma. So the way that people's nervous system and subconscious psyche will play things out in order to heal itself, it will, it will, um, create more chaos and more crisis in order for it to, to, to bring your attention to it, okay? So again, a lot of these things, there's no judgment, there's no shame, it's just what you do with these behaviors, which we'll talk about at the end. Intellectualizing, staying in your head, trying to understand everything, but not actually trying to slow things down enough or not going and doing, so you could read a million books you could watch a million videos, but if you don't actually go in week after week, day in and day out, and work on the way that that shows up in your life, it's not gonna change. Your waking consciousness is only like 10 to 15% of your brain. So much of it is subconscious, it's subliminal, it's your nervous system, your body is taking in hundreds of thousands of inputs every single second that don't make it into your conscious mind, okay? So to think that you can think your way out of it is, is not, it's not going to happen. Okay. And then not doing homework, <laughs> not doing homework. Now I always ask my people, Hey, do you like homework? Do you not like homework? Do you, are you willing to do homework? I'm always asking you and getting your permission. And, um, and people will say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do homework. I want to like, I want to ship these things. And then they don't actually do it. And again, is it a pattern or is it a one-time thing? Um, letting, this is also tends to be subconscious, but letting the therapist work harder than you. Hopefully your therapist isn't working harder than you, but people will, people will subconsciously pull the therapist in to work harder for them, work harder than them by saying they don't know to everything, by not actually trying to sense into how they feel, by um, all these ways of like, I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know, like, not really actively using your your brain and thinking about what's going on for you or saying hey i'm having a hard time figuring this out for me but i want to right what and then we talk about what's getting in the way what's getting in the way of of you being able to track yourself if you have developmental trauma it's highly likely you don't know how you feel you don't know what's happening in your body that's okay but you, there needs to be an effort to learn those skills so that you can make progress Okay. And this is, again, this is rewiring your brain. This is not just easy stuff. Okay. Um, I see this a lot. I see this a lot when the therapist, and I know clients or th other therapists who have seen this a lot. This is a very common thing. When the therapist goes on vacation and client tries to quit therapy, they get mad at the therapist for going on vacation or going to a training or just being out of the office and not being able to see them. Um, or let's say the therapist makes a mistake or they miss a tune to you and the, or miss a tune to the client, even in a minor way. And the client is upset with the therapist and then tries to punish the therapist by, again, by leaving or, um, withholding information or, um, yeah, like punishing without a conversation. Okay. 
And then not being honest about unhealthy behaviors or omitting unhealthy behaviors from talking, from, from the session, right? So if you're not talking about something that you're doing that's addictive or compulsive or um, can, the same pattern, if you're not talking about the fact that you engaged in a pattern that you're trying to fix and you're not talking about that, that's a therapy, a therapy intervening or interfering behavior, okay? And then, again, leaving therapy and either not being honest about why you're leaving or making some excuse that's new and then not being willing to talk about it or not being willing to talk about termination, you just leave, okay, that's a flight response and it's an avoidance behavior. So that's gonna get in your way and that's a relational dynamic that you need to learn to work through. And this is a big one that I saw in wilderness therapy, which was sending your child to treatment or sending some family member to treatment. Usually it's a kid because a kid can't protest, they can't do anything about it, but sending your kid to treatment and thinking they're 100% the problem and then not doing any work on yourself. Huge, this happens all the time. Parents thinking the kid's the, pro the problem. It's, it's not just the kid, it's never just the kid. Okay, unless there's some organic brain disorder, right? Some kind of, and you need to get testing for that if that's the case, and you need to get them help, right? But that's, that's a different thing. So um, what's the solution? What's the solution? The solution is to talk about it. Talk about it. There is no shame. So this might sound like I want to push you away you went on vacation or you went to a training or you, I felt like you missed me there and you said something that hurt me and I wanna run away and I wanna punish you and I'm really mad at you. That is a very different conversation to have. That is a very productive conversation to have. Or I'm not sure I'm vibing with this and I'm not sure why, could we talk about that? Or I want to avoid that topic. I can feel myself wanting to avoid that topic. I can feel the urge to run away, and I want to tell you that. I want to talk, talk about your urges. Talk about the ways and the, 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 the pull that you're feeling towards avoidance. Talk about it. That is the solution. Say, hey, this is what's going on for me. That is what changes these behaviors into, if you're really willing, into something new to say, hey, this is a pattern for me. Oh, I've, I've done 14 consult calls with therapists and I never signed up with anybody. Or I had a consult call with somebody and said, said I, was, I, you know, I, I wanted to do it and then I freaked out and, <laughs> and then I said I didn't want to do it. <laughs> that's part of your pattern. That is part of the shit that's keeping you stuck, right? So talk about it. Talk about the urge. Talk about, I, I feel the urge to run away. I feel the urge. I, I'm so fucking terrified of looking at this pattern. I'm so terrified of looking at this trauma. And if that is the case, doing somatic work with me is very different. I'm not, we, we are slowing it way down to go fast in that work. We are not going straight to the core of your traumas. We are not bulldozing you. It is the opposite of that. So I think people have a misconception about therapy as like, we're just gonna talk about all the shitty things in your life that, that suck. That's not the case. That's not how you build resilience in your nervous system. And it's not how you get better. So if you're scared of like, ooh, I'm gonna go do trauma treatment with Jenna, but I'm terrified because I've, I've done EMDR, I've done other modalities that push me into the core of the trauma, that's the, we don't do that. We don't do that, okay? So get honest with yourself and don't judge yourself for these patterns. Try not to judge yourself. And if you are judging yourself, then talk about that too, <laughs> right? It's just like, be aware, be aware, talk about it, own it, and it'll be okay. Ta have a relational dialogue with your therapist, with me, whoever, whoever you're working with. Um, and that's the, what will start to shift this pattern. Okay, and then when you feel the urge to run, when you feel the urge to quit, when you feel the urge to push the therapist away, you talk about it and then you do the opposite. You tell them that, I wanna push you away. I'm terrified of telling how, you how I feel. I'm so fucking mad at you. 
because you did this thing that I hate or that was really hurtful to me. If the therapist is a good therapist, they will validate the shit out of that. And they will praise you for being honest about that relational dynamic. This is the heart of therapy and this is how you get better. I hope that helps. See you soon.